Hi, my name's Nick, Clover's Portfolio Manager, and today we're going to be installing one of our dry valleys alongside a concrete interlocking roof tile. So this is the product we're going to be working with. It's our three metre high profile dry valley. Now at Clover, we have two types of dry valley. We have the underbatten dry valley and this one here, which lips up at the outer edge and sits over an additional support batten. Both are available in two heights. So we have one for slate and one for tile essentially. And they're both made from GRP, offering a cost effective alternative to the traditional material of lead. So the main purpose of the valley trough is to channel water from the roof down into the eaves or to the guttering. It's actually the central upstand of the dry valley, which means we can fit these without the use of mortar. It's actually stopping the crossover of water from one side to the other. So now we can have a look at how they're fitted. Valley troughs should always be supported by valley boards. These are either laid flush with the rafters where a 12 mm plywood board would be used or laid continuously over them where a six mm board can be used. A strip of underlay will need to be installed on top of the valley boards to act as an additional layer of protection. Support battens, which we'll refer to as counter battens, should be fitted into position to accommodate the valley trough. The main roofing membrane can now be installed. As a minimum, the membrane should be dressed over the first counter batten. For the Clover Overbatten Dry Valley, a pre-formed eaves closure piece is available. This needs to be supported on a smaller 150mm length of the dry valley, which can be nailed into the counter batten. This eaves closure section can now be placed over the support and nailed securely into position. With the area now fully prepared, place the valley trough on top of the eaves closure piece and fix at minimum 500mm centres on each side of the counter battens through the raised side section of the valley trough. Large headed clout nails should be used to fix the valley troughs. For any longer runs, successive lengths of valley should be fitted as required to allow a minimum overlap of 150mm when measured vertically. At the bottom, the eaves closure piece should be cut to suit to ensure that the water discharges into the gutter, and the tiling battens should finish on top of the valley boards next to the counter battens. Once your valley is installed, you're ready to apply the roof tiles. The tiles should be laid so they finish close to the upstand at the central line of the valley trough. Where small tile cuts occur at the valley, a tile clip can be used to secure them in place. Self-adhesive packers are supplied to support these cuts if required. At the top, the valley can be finished with a flashing or a saddle detail. If you should have a situation where two valleys meet at the top, then a preformed closer section is available. Remember, you should always seek professional guidance when installing Clover's products. If you are struggling, please contact Clover's technical department for further assistance or visit clover.co.uk.